Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to talk about Phoenix Live View Abstractions. So we built our basic simple application, but I want to tell you what's going on under the hood. Let's get started. So we have this web application we built last time, but it's not a traditional one. This is a single page app without a bunch of routes that stitch this increment button back to the client. And there's really just one page and one implementation. So there must be going something under the hood. And in fact, there is. And we're going to talk about those abstractions and how they're going to work to make your life easier as you build web applications. So I want to think about what happens when we first load this application and also when the user clicks on a button. There's really two passes going on here. The first thing that happens is the browser makes a request, whether it's clicking on a link or in our case, typing a URL. This is a straight HTTP request that flows through Phoenix in the traditional way, but eventually it's going to move into the Live View route and execute our Live View module where it's going to fire the mount three function. And this is going to establish the state for our Live View and then it's going to encounter a render function, and this is going to send back the static resources just like any traditional Phoenix application would. So our first request to the page, we go over HTTP to Phoenix, we go into the endpoint, into the router, and then eventually our live view. We hit the mount3 function to establish the state of our live view, and then we render it and send back a plain Jane static page. And that static page is going to have some JavaScript on it. And once that page is mounted, then the JavaScript can begin to run and establish a connection with our socket. Now, don't worry about the names under the hood of the JavaScript functions. They're not going to be exact. But once we establish a connection, then I'm going to take another pass through the mount. And the job this time is to take any changes, put them in a bucket, and then send those changes to render. And then render will then send only the page changes back to the page so that JavaScript can stitch them into the DOM. So this begins the second pass. And now I can wait for events. And when the user triggers an event, in our example, by clicking on that increment button, we're going to now communicate over the socket. And then that event will be sent to our live view. And in our case, we'll pick this one up with the handle event. And then once we've changed something, that triggers live view to render whatever changes that I make, send those back to the live view so that then the JavaScript can stitch them into the DOM, but we don't write any of the code on the left-hand side. Our brain stays planted firmly on the right-hand side. All of the JavaScript to do that work on the left is written for us, and that's what makes Live View so powerful. So remember, we have these two blocks of events. The things that happen before we're connected, where I get the request, where that triggers the mount, and then we render, and then it sends back static pages. That looks a whole lot like a traditional request response website, and in fact it is. But once that's mounted, and we make the connection, then everything is going to flow over my socket, and that's going to be an event-based model, where I get the connection, I establish my data in the mount a second time, I send back only the page changes, and then apply those to the DOM, and then I wait for events and I process events one after another. The user sends an event. It goes to the server. We handle the event and apply changes to our data. And then we send the page changes back and the JavaScript on the client stitches them into the DOM. And that makes an enormously efficient exchange in terms of performance and an enormously efficient programming system for the developer to work inside. And that's what has everybody so excited about LiveView, because you only really have to think about three different things. 
first we need to prepare to work where we stuff some data in the socket inside our mount. Next, we need to do a little work where we take a socket and we transform it some way and then pass that socket back to the rest of the application. That would be like adding one to the count in the socket. It's no more complicated than that, just simple transformations on the socket. And the third thing that I'll do is show the work. That means that I take a socket and then I turn it into the markup that my user can use. All of that happens in a couple of callbacks. The most important one is mount for now. And then when I do some work, that's always going to happen in handlers where live view gets called and then we get a chance to change the socket or transform it in some material way. And then if we ever change the socket, then LiveView is going to have our backs and it's going to call the render function where we show some work. We don't have to worry about when or how that happens, but in the render function, all we do is use that render function to transform our socket into markup. We don't really care how the browser consumes it, whether it dumps down one big bucket of static text like it does in the first pass, or we, it sends down only changes that are stitched into the DOM in the second pass, the render function looks the same to us. And that means that we get an extraordinarily powerful programming model. So let's look at this in code. Here's our live view, and the first thing that we have to do is prepare some work. And when we prepare to work, all we're doing is putting data into the socket to set it up for our initial live view. And in this case, we have to initialize the count. We don't need to do anything else. And the second thing that we need to do is do some work. And that means that every time an increment step comes in, we're going to transform the count. So in this case, we're taking whatever was in the count and we're replacing that with socket.assigns.count plus one. So essentially, that's just a basic increment. And the third step is that we are going to show some work. And that means we take our socket and we pass it through this render function. And assigns is really part of the socket. It's the part where we put custom content. And we're going to return a template that's a Heeks template that's basically markup that LiveView understands. And then all we're going to do is take this and render some static text, but with some dynamic content stitched in from place to place. And that together is going to build this application that's easy to construct, easy to SEO, because initially the page comes down in one big piece. It's easy to reason about because we only have to think about these three main tasks. Prepare to work, do some work, and show some work. And that's really an excellent thing. For Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.